I made it clear to the Supreme Court that my fear is that I do not want Nandi Kano to die in detention. I gave the example of Abdul Abubakar, former governor of Kogu State. He was my client. And I continued to warn the prosecution that time to hurry up and carry out this trial. Because if this man died, then there will be no person to try. To try. And when he eventually died, the first time we go to court, I asked them, can you now go and try a dead person in the grave? You cannot. So, our criminal justice system says, come and stand trial. What does it connote? Come and stand trial means you should be well and heavy enough to stand a trial. He didn't say come and sit down trial or come and lie down trial or come and prostrate trial or come and kneel down trial. He says come and stand trial. So you should be heavy enough to stand. That is what it connotes. So I told the Supreme Court that my worry is that I would not want Nabi Kanu to die in Jesus Gulag because of their delay. They have been delaying this matter. This trial started since December 2015. They went from four counts to seven counts to 50 counts. Amendment. They did in all seven amendments. If you were sure a person had committed a crime, why were you engaging in seven amendments? And of course, the last 15 counts, I, I, I went after the jugular. The Federal High Court struck out eight of the 15 counts based on a preliminary objection. We took the remaining seven counts to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, on the 10th of October, 2022, struck out the remaining seven counts and further ordered that Nabi Kanu was discharged and that he should never again be detained and he should never again be tried on those offenses for which he was standing trial before his brutal, excruciating, torturous, extraordinary rendition from Kenya on the 27th of June 2021 after he was literally kidnapped and ki uh, captured on the 19th of June when he went to Kenya voluntarily as a British citizen and was kept in a decrepit, non-government uh, 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 place for about eight days before they flew him back to Nigeria. Based on that, the Court of Appeal held that even in arresting a person within Nigeria, you still have to go through the provisions of Adjalag Section 8, which say you must treat a suspect or a defendant with humanity. You must not subject him to degrading and inhuman treatment. Section 113 of the of the of the Aja is there. Section 94 of the Aja is there. All of them say you must comply with both local and international laws in trying a suspect. They did not. They did not subject themselves to extradition proceedings as provided for by the Extradition Act. Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. And there is also the doctrine of specialty that you can only try a person even if they extra, even if they had engaged in lawful extradition proceedings which they did not do, you can only try a person for the offense he was standing. I mean you cannot try a person for the offense he was standing trial before his extradition, uh, extrajudicial or extraordinary rendition. It has to be a new offense for which you are extraditing the person. But they didn't do all this. So the Court of Appeal saw through the federal government's facade and masquerade and tore it to shreds and discharged Nambi Kano, ordered that he be not detained and ordered that henceforth he should never be tried. But the federal government surprisingly went to the same Court of Appeal but another panel this time to ask for a stay of execution. Yeah, yeah, good morning.
Yeah, today's proceedings, today's proceedings um, border essentially on the main appeal, which we believe was ripe for hearing. When this case came up on the 27th of April, Thursday, 27th of April, the Supreme Court ordered the federal government to file their brief of argument as appellant within six days. They had asked for five days, but the Supreme Court was gracious enough to give them six days. They did not file until they did not file that brief until Tuesday. Even when they filed it on Tuesday, I discovered that the brief was 53 pages more than the threshold of the 40 pages allowed by the Supreme Court. I'm not the kind of lawyer to embarrass opponents. So I told the Supreme Court, I mean, I told Ghazali SM from the Federal Ministry of Justice and his junior, I called them and then also wrote to them that the practice and convention at the Supreme Court is that a brief should not exceed 40 pages. So they had to file another one on Wednesday, which they served us late on Thursday. We had only the weekend to prepare our own respondents' brief, which we duly filed on Tuesday in the morning and served them. So from all intents and purposes, the appeal was ripe for hearing. But today, the federal government came and said they wanted to file a reply brief. I told their counsel, you can even, these points of law you are showing me which you want to file formally, you can stand up and say them orally, verbally, and we will not oppose. In any event, you are saying we raised a preliminary objection in our brief. It was raised in our brief, not as a separate document. But I believe that their own intention was to stall the proceedings because he said he had the instruction of the Attorney General that he must reply to it. I said, no one is saying you should not reply. But it doesn't have to be in a written form. You can reply orally. We have all done it now and again by replying orally, verbally. He will not do that. So the Supreme Court said, in order not to show them out, they will give them a short time to file the reply within two days. Then I begged the Supreme Court, I pleaded with the Supreme Court to give us the shortest possible date. Even this month or early next month. But they looked at their calendar and they are docket that is pitiably full. It's so unfortunate this is the busiest Supreme Court in the world because all manners of cases come here and politicians will fight themselves dirty and they will all end up here. And even the smallest case about stealing a piece of fish or disagreeing over between a, hus a disagreement between a husband and a wife, we end up at the Supreme Court. That is why I've crusaded again and again over the years that we should have hierarchy of course within states so that each state of the Federation should have its own hierarchy of course from magistrate to customary court to high court to court of appeal to supreme court this is how it happens in the united states of america from where we borrow our presidentialism but here the smallest case we go from the smallest village and end up at the supreme court and all the politicians will fight dirty will quarrel will not put their ass together all of them will come here so when the supreme court is beginning to have like 19 cases in one day like a magistrate court, then you know there's a problem. So they looked at their dockets and discovered that the next available date is after the vacation, which will be 14th of September. Having indicated, I pleaded with the Supreme Court to allow any of the two motions which are still existing that we filed. One is motion for bail and the other one is motion to transfer him from his current DSS Gulag, I don't call it detention, it's Gulag, 
to Kujie Correctional Center, which the federal government indicated that they had they are also opposing. 